Hi students, in this video we're going to begin our last week uh, talking about Reconstruction. Uh, Reconstruction is a fascinating period, the period of Reconstruction after the Civil War. It's a fascinating period in American history because it looks at questions about who is a citizen and what does it mean to be a citizen. Uh, what is the federal, the role of the federal government as opposed to the role of the state government in protecting uh, and caring for citizens. Uh, so you have these three different bodies that have been in play throughout the entire history of the United States. And the story, a lot of the story that we've been looking at in the past weeks is the effort to understand how those different bodies interact with one another. The federal government, the state government, individual citizens. Um, and so we've reached a point at the end of the Civil War. The Confederacy has been defeated. The 13th Amendment of the Constitution has been passed, which outlaws slavery. But the question that the federal government is trying to answer during this period is, is ending slavery enough? <clears throat> and what kind of role should the federal government play in establishing equality for its citizens? And how much of establishing that equality should be left to the states? How much of it should be left to individuals? In the aftermath of the war, the American South is devastated. 20% uh, of all white males have died. Um, obviously, many of those people would have been married. They leave behind them many widows, many children in fatherless homes. We have a, a huge, about 20% of the state budget of Mississippi one year was used to pay for artificial limbs for veterans from the war. The infrastructure of the South has been devastated. Uh, one example would be uh, livestock animals, horses, mules, used for plowing and farming. 40% of them have been killed uh, in the war. From 1860 to 1870, wealth in the northern United States grew by 70, by 60%. Wealth in the South shrank by 50%. So even though the war is, end, uh, is over, politically, the country has been united. Culturally and economically speaking, in some ways, it's being further divided. Before the Civil War, the South made up about 30%. The economy of the South made up about 30% of the GDP of the United States. After the war, it's down to 12 and so that's a result of the North becoming more wealthy and the South becoming poorer as, as a result of the war. It will take about 30 years, so two generations, for Southern agriculture, Southern production to be reaching the sort of levels that it was achieving in the 1840s and 50s. So that's the status of the South after the Civil War. And this is something that the federal government has to deal with. How are they going to rebuild this part of the country? Um, unless they want to consider it as a colony uh, or as a conquered population, they're going to have to integrate it back into the country. And you have this part of the country that's significantly poorer uh, than the rest of the country. But the problem with that is then you're saying right after we fought a war against these people, we have to give them all this support. And that's a, a difficult line to walk. On the other end of the spectrum, who are the people who are most off, who are worst off in this devastated South? Former slaves. So the 13th Amendment has made them free in the sense that they are not bought and sold anymore. Um, but it, it doesn't mean uh, that they're citizens. It doesn't mean that they can vote. It doesn't mean that they have uh, money. And so we find uh, that Congress establishes the Freedmen's Bureau to establish jobs um, and education uh, for what for this week we're going to call freedmen, the slaves who have been freed by the Civil War and by the 13th Amendment. And the Freedmen's Bureau, their role is to come in to establish schools. They establish uh, 4,000 schools in the five years after the Civil War. And to negotiate job contracts for people who have never negotiated a job contract before. Nevertheless, Martin Delaney 
the leading, uh, the, the most superior colored military officer in the United States Army at the end of the war, gave a speech in which he said to the freedmen population, the population of former slaves, he said, the burden of freedom rests with you. There are people in the South, people who still have slavery attitudes towards African Americans, who say that African Americans are not intelligent enough um, to, to be free and to govern themselves. You have to show them that you can do this. This is the, the burden of freedom, that if you cannot show that you are able to take those steps, that you are able to live as freed men, you will find yourselves enslaved again. And we find that there are two different approaches to reconstruction. There's a more limited plan on the part of the federal government, more limited federal Im involvement. And this was Lincoln's plan. 10% of the pre-war electorate had to swear allegiance to the Constitution. At that point, the state would be reintegrated into the Union, could vote in federal elections, could send representatives to Congress. And then the states would be left to implement the 13th Amendment. Slavery would have come to an end. Remember that Ending slavery is a war aim for Lincoln more than anything else. And there's a more radical plan on the part of the group that's known as the radical Republicans, who don't just want to reintegrate the southern states into the Union, they want to radically transform southern society. Um, and it's also the case they want to control uh, the southern states. And so for them, they want it to be 50% of the pre-war electorate who swear an allegiance to the Constitution before that state is reintegrated back into the Union. And until that happens, those states need to be controlled by uh, Northern representatives in order to try and remake this society to look totally different uh, than it had before. Now, Abraham Lincoln was probably the politician who could have walked the line between these two groups. Even though his plan is on the more minimalist end, there were those further across that spectrum from him who probably um, he could have persuaded to adopt a plan that saw more federal involvement in emphasizing equality within post-war Southern society. There were probably elements further on the radical spectrum who he could have persuaded um, to move further towards integrating Southern society into the United States as a whole. Um, but as we know, Abraham Lincoln is assassinated uh, very shortly after the war ends. He becomes the first United States president to be uh, assassinated. Um, and people are truly moved uh, by this assassination and by Lincoln's death. We're told that uh, Grant, Ulysses Grant, uh, this famously stoic Civil War general, wept at Abraham Lincoln's funeral. And it seems as though with Lincoln's death, we're going to see that these two different approaches to Reconstruction are going to split further and further apart.